Good afternoon, class. Our topic this um, our topic today is about local government autonomy and decentralization. Okay, so um, government and public administration are as old as the history of people working together in large groups. These have been um, essential features of human society long before the dawn of recorded history. Ever since man emerges from the most primitive forms of association, he has had to devise administrative systems. In discussing government and politics in public administration, uh, Car Carlton Clymer Road and Carl Kimby Crystal and Toton James Anderson believe that there should be a clear distinction between politics or the formulation of public policy on the one hand and administration or the carrying out of such policy on the other. Policy in a democracy must be the result of a give and take of politics and politicians. But administration should be entrusted to the trained expert administrators chosen for their competence, not their political affiliation. So, bisan pag kinsa na sila nga party na belong, dili dapat na mao ang atong basihan, no? Uh, when it comes to administration. Um, it should be pointed out, however, that public administration and politics are connected in such a manner that one becomes almost meaningless without the other. The administrative process of government should only be seen well within the broad extent, context rather, of its political system. Um, as Marshall E. Dimock, Gladys Q. Dim o. Dimock, and um, Luis Kinnick put it, Uh, an understanding of politics is the key to an understanding of public administration. Now, politics in this sense is not partisan politics, but um, the activities of an in interest group which permeate the whole fabric of government. Politics, like the government stands for the public interest, not of um, the personal interest of those whoever is the politician. Uh, in, in this perspective, government refers to an organization, machinery, or agency through which a political unit exercises authority and perform functions. Now, ideally, um, the focus in the organization of a government is the need of a, the people. Okay? So, a government is needed by a nation or a state. The state involves agencies, um, exercises its sovereignty, uses its power, powers, and has the right to allocate goods and service within the system. Okay, so let's proceed to the concept of governance. So in most dictionaries class, government and governance are interchangeably used both denoting the exercise of authority in an organization, institution, or state. Government is a name given to the entity exercising that authority. Authority can most simply define as legitimate power, whereas power is the ability to influence the behavior of others. Authority is a right to do so. Now, authority class is therefore the base on an acknowledged duty 
to obey rather than on any form of coercion or manipulation. Max Weber distinguished between three kinds of authority based on the different grounds upon obedience can be established. We have traditional authority, which is rooted in history, charismatic authority that stems from personality and legal authority is grounded in a set of impersonal rules. To study government is to study the exercise of authority. Okay, so government is closely related to politics. So um, we have to bear in our mind that when we talk of government and politics, so they are, um, what we call this, they complement each other. Okay, so, but let's not dwell on the deeper meaning of um, the government you know, or governance because, as I understand, it is discussed already in your other subjects. So, our subject is public administration, man. So, money atong um, I focus. Okay, now, okay, take a look of these three. Um, actors. You know, so these are the actors of governance. Okay, so the management, we have state or government sector, we have the civil society, and we have the private sector. Um, let's note that the management of, a, of public affairs, for that matter, is not um, not an exclusive domain of government, and the concept of governance goes beyond the realm, realm of the state or public sector. So, maghisgat ganit na governance class, dili na gusto ignon sa responsibility ra na sa state. Okay? So, ganit silang tulo, these are the actors, key actors of governance. Okay? Um, it, uh, it involves the civil society, which comprises of schools or academe, um, non-governmental organizations or NGOs, uh, people's organization, PO, or voluntary organizations. Then we have the private or the business sectors. Well, when we talk of private sector, so the involvement of this um, um, sectors no? is based on the common interests and similar aspirations committed to the same public concerns. Okay, so um, as the Deputy Secretary General of the UN said, governance is not something the state does to the society, but the way society itself. Okay, and the individuals who compose it um, regulate all the different aspects of their collective life. So, uh, let's discuss first the state. You know, state as the actor, one actor of governance. State, the state is the principal actor of government to facilitate participation and provide an enabling environment to other elements of the society. So, principal actor is si state, okay, or the government sector. It is a strong entity that um, recognizes the significance and autonomy of the other sectors without overwhelming them. As part of the state, uh, the local government performs a a, a crucial role in the efforts of the national government in implementing its programs and projects on activities. Uh, the local government is a real actor in effecting governance and development. Okay, so the local government is an avenue where the civil society groups at the community level can participate meaningfully 
in the decision-making processes. Okay, so by virtue of the powers and authority provided in the Local Government Code of 1991, uh, local government formulates and defines the legal and um, regulatory framework. This serves as the basis for the involvement and participation of the various organizations and groups in the government or in the governance of the community. Okay, so muna siya si state again, siya ang principal actor. Then we have the private sector or the business sector or the corporate governance. Okay, so corporate governance, maghisko tag private, corporate. Okay, so in governance, uh, in governance parlance, the private and or business sector serves as the engine of the society. Okay, so engine of the society. Kung maghiskotek state, siya ang principal actor. When we talk of private sector, maunis siya ang engine of the society. It serves as the engine of the society. It is an important collaborator um, in the economic development of the community. It generates jobs and incomes for the people in the community. Okay, so because of its resources, such as financial and technical expertise, uh, it can assist the local government in coming up with the economic plan for the community and help in the implementation of the plan. Okay, so it also provides uh, provide the needed resources for the government to enable it to um, pursue big and wide-scale projects that are beyond the local government's fin financial capability. Uh, efficiency and economy are expected outputs or products of a corporate governance. Okay, so the state provides a level playing field for those able to compete and um turns its attention to the provisions of safety nets for those unable to do so. So, mauna siya si private sector. Now, let's talk about the civil society. So, unsa mong po civil society? Okay, so, the civil society consists of a complex of citizens and groups outside government working in the public arena. Okay, so, it is often called as CSOs. So I know, kadugog na moon sa ng mga CSOs, civil society organizations, and also sometimes referred to as the third sector. Okay? Uh, the civil society comprises the academe or schools, NGOs, or mga non governmental organizations, like, for example, um, Association of Schools or Public Administration in the Philippines, uh, that house at the National College of Public Administration and Governance, which is religiously collaborating with the government and um, NGOs. Okay, so we have mga Galing Po Foundation, we have Social Watch Philippines, so daghana sila. Okay. Um, other civil society groups include POs, okay, people's organizations, and the voluntary groups. So uh, this se sector plays an important role in the facilitation and interaction among the key players of local governance. So important the um, um, third sector class and civil society. Okay, it mobilizes mobilizes uh, the various groups or organizations in the community to participate in planning and decision-making process. Okay, so again, these are the three actors of governance. We have the state or the government sector, uh, which is the principal actor of governance. We have the private sector or the corporate governance that stands as um, the engine, okay, the engine of the society. And we have the third is the civil society, which is considered as the third sector. Okay. Okay. 
Let's talk about the different meanings and concept of local government. So, nakaduong na put mo aning local government, no? Okay, so, first, distribution of powers to local government as limitation to political authority. Now, in most states, the power of government are distribu distributed horizontally and vertically. Okay, so, by horizontal distribution of government powers, the powers of the government are distributed among three branches of the national government, namely legislative, executive, and judicial branches of the government. Okay, so the three branches of the government. The distribution of these powers may either be complete or partial. Uh, in most presidential systems, such as in the U.S. and the Philippines, there is complete separation of powers between the, these three branches. So, na hisgutan na nato before sa atong, uh, previous uh, topic. Except to the extent that some of these governmental powers are shared by um, constitutional fiat. Then, when we talk of vertical distribution of governmental powers, the powers of the government are distributed among at least two levels of government. So we have the upper and the lower levels. Now, when we talk of upper level, this is the national government. So the government of the whole country. And when we talk of uh, lower level, these are the local governments. So the governments of the part. Okay, so do not be, um, do not forget that. Okay, so kung horizontal, it is distributed um, among three branches of the government. And when we talk of vertical, so kaning, uh, upper level and the lower level. Okay. Okay. Second concept is local governments as political and territorial subdivisions of the state. Okay, so local government is defined as a political subdivision of a nation or state which is constituted by law and has substantial control of local affairs. Local government unit is also defined in section 15 of the local government code of 1991 as a body politic and corporate endowed with powers to be exercised by it in conformity with law. Now, generally, a system of government is either unitary or federal. Okay, so in unitary states like the Philippines, the national government supervises local government affairs as the local government derive both their existence and powers from the national government. In federal states like the U.S. and Canada, uh, local governments are supreme within their own spheres such that they actually become quasi-sovereign. Okay, so, um, lahi sa ato na unitary state. Okay. Uh, when we talk of quasi-sovereign, uh, they have their own sovereignty. No? So although they are still subordinate to the national government in some respects, such as in the area of foreign affairs, defense, currency, and commerce, but then na sila ilang own sovereignty. Okay, so in, any uh, every state, uh, they can they can exercise their own sovereignty okay third is third concept is we have the local government as municipal corporations okay so local governments are essentially municipal corporations so one na natin mga um charter no as such, it is a body politic and corporate instituted by the incorporation of the inhabitants of a city or town for the purpose of local government thereof. Municipal corporations are established by law, partly as an agent of the state to assist in the civil government of the country, but 
chiefly to regulate and administer the local internal affairs of the city, town, or district incorporated. Um, as a result of this concept of local government as municipal corporations, the corporation is therefore legally considered distinct from it, it its members. So, moment at siya class, a corporation. Uh, the corporation is or has distinct um, personality of its members. Okay. Now, um, in a unitary system of government, municipal governments are only agents of the national government. Okay, so local councils, so mamata kita sa Philippines, unitary manta, di manta federal. Okay, so local councils exercises or exercise only delegated legislative powers conferred upon them by the Congress as the national lawmaking body. So, katong atong naiskutan before that it's the Congress um, legislative. Okay. The delegate cannot be superior to the principal or exercises powers higher than those of the latter. Okay. Our country is a unitary form of government, not a federal state, as I mentioned earlier. Being so, any form of autonomy granted to governments will necessarily be limited and confined within the extent allowed by the central authority. Okay. This principle of local autonomy class under the 1987 constitution simply means decentralization. Okay, so it does not make the local government sovereign within the state. Unlike sa federal system na quasi-sovereign sila, si unitary dili, like the Philippines. We, um, the, the local governments are uh, were only delegated or has only delegated powers and dili na sila pwede mo, 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 mo labaw, okay, sa central authority. Okay. Let's talk about sources of powers of Philippine local governments. Okay, so local governments derive their powers from the 1987 constitu Constitution, specifically Section 25, Article 2. We also have Section 7, ah, no, Section 5 to 7, Article 10, the Local Government Code of the 1991 or Republic Act 7160 or their charters or the statute creating them. And, of course, we have other laws, decrees, executive orders, proclamations, and administrative regulations, like, for example, the Revised Administrative Code of the Philippines. Okay, so they have, mauni sila mga sources sa atong Philippine local government. Okay. Classification of powers. Powers of local government units may be classified into either express, implied, or inherent. Okay, powers necessary and powers proper for governance, like, for example, promote health and safety, in, in, um, enhance prosperity, improve morals of the inhabitants. Okay. They may also be classified into either public and or governmental or private and or proprietary or propi propriety, intramural or extramural, mandatory or directory, and ministerial or discretionary. Specifically, and under the code and the rules of regulations implementing the Local Government Code of 1991, or the LGC of 1991, local government may exercise four general kinds of powers. Namely, A, 1, those that are granted to them, those that are implied from those that are granted to them, those that are necessary appropriate or incidental for their efficient and effective governance, and those that are essential to the promotion of the general welfare of their inhabitants. Okay. Let's talk about kinds of municipal corporations. So municipal, muni, municipal corporations are either de jure 
or de facto. Okay, so doha na sila class. A municipal corporation is considered de jure if its creation perfectly complies with all the requirements of incorporation. So de jure na siya kung tanan nga requirements of incorporation ilang na um, comply. Okay. A municipal corporation is considered de facto when not all requirements were complied with in with in its incorporation, but there are at least the following. One, valid law authorizing incorporation, attempt in good faith to organize it, colorable compliance with law, and assumption of, of corporate power. So, matawag yapo na sa jang corporation, municipal corporation, or de facto municipal corporation, kung na ani sila pupat. Okay? But if complete ang tanang requirements of incorporation, such municipal corporation is considered de jure. Okay. Let's proceed to the concept of local autonomy, decentralization, devolution, and concentration. Local autonomy. Under the 1987 Constitution, the state is mandated to ensure the autonomy of local governments. It is further mandated that the territorial and political subdivision shall enjoy local autonomy. Okay? Local autonomy signifies a more responsive and accountable local government structure instituted through a system of decentralization. The grant of autonomy is intended to break up the monopoly of the national government over the affairs of local government, not to end the relation or, of partnership and interdependence between the central administration and local government units. Now, um, in a case, in Limbua versus Mangilin case, the Supreme Court uh, ruling under that under the auspices of the lo old local government law, um, it, it ruled that autonomy is either decentralization of administration or decentralization of power. Okay, so there is the decentralization of administration when the central government delegates administrative powers to political subdivisions in order to broaden the base of government power and in the process to make local governments more responsive and accountable and ensure their fullest development as self-reliant communities and make them more effective partners in the pursuit of national development and progress. Okay. Um, at the same time, it relieves the central government of the burden of managing local affairs and enables it to concentrate on the national concern. Okay. Uh, in this case, the president exercises general supervision over them, but only to ensure that the local affairs are, are administered according to law. He, however, has no control over their acts in the sense that he cannot substitute their judgment on their own. Okay, so let's take note of that. Now, decentralization of power involves an abdication of political power in favor of the local government units uh, declared to be autonomous. So in that case, the autonomous government is free to chart its own destiny and shape its future with minimum intervention from local or rather from central authorities. Okay, so according to a constitutional author, decentralization of power amounts to self-emulation since in that event, the autonomous government becomes accountable not to the central authority but it to its constituency. So, lahi o mayon kag decentralization of administration because ang administration regi get delegate. Okay? Uh, when we talk of decentralization of power, ki-abdicate niya 
ang political power in favor of the local government. So, mahimo ng autonomous. The, 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 the local government can decide for itself, can shape their own destiny. Pwede sila magplano sa ilang budget, um, sa ilang mga programs, sa ilang mga activities. So, kana. Okay, so mo na kalahian sa decentralization of administration and decentralization of power. Okay? Okay. Um, in a later case, however, uh, Pimentel versus Aguirre, okay, the Supreme Court no noted that under the Philippine concept of local autonomy, the national government has not completely relinquished all its powers over local governments, including autonomous region. So only administrative powers over local affairs are delegated to political subdivision. So administration ra ang delegate class. Okay, so not dilitanan nga powers. The purpose of the delegation is to make governance more directly responsive and effective at the local levels. Local autonomy under the Constitution involves a mere decentralization of administration, not of power. So, maoni ang giingon sa Pimental versus Aguirre, in which local officials remain accountable to the central government in the manner the law may provide. So, Autonomy does not contemplate making many states out of local government units. So, maoni atong gina-practice karon. Okay? So, bisan pag na ay local autonomy ang atong mga local government units, still they remain or the local the local officials remain accountable to the central government, no? And of course, they are also um accountable to their constituent, but dili lang nga wa sila gyud na nga accountability sa central government. Okay, so nasa I hope uh, na sabda natin. Uh, under existing law, uh, local government units, in addition to having administrative autonomy in the exercise of their functions, enjoy fiscal autonomy as well. So when we talk of fiscal autonomy, it means that local governments have the power to create their own sources of revenue in addition to their equitable share in the national taxes released by the national government, as well as the power to allocate the resources uh, in accordance with their own priorities. Okay, so it extends to uh, the preparation of their budgets and local officials in turn have to work within the constraints thereof. They are not formulated at the national level and imposed on local governments, whether they are relevant to local needs and resources or not. Okay, so na ay fiscal autonomy ang mga local government units. They can plan for their mga revenue resources or revenue sources. However, while local autonomy refers to decentralization of administrative powers, the creation of autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao and the Cordilleras, which is peculiar to the 1987 constitution, contemplates the grant of political autonomy and not just administrative autonomy to these regions. Okay, so thus the provision in the constitution for an autonomous regional government with a basic structure consisting of an executive department and a legislative assembly and special courts with personal family and um with personal family and property law jurisdiction in its of the autonomous region so na i i courts separate courts um uh, autonomous region class. So, mga nagkitawag og Sharia courts. Okay? So, Sharia courts are under the um, administrative supervision of the Supreme Court of the Philippines, of course. Okay? So, um, Sharia, Sharia court uh, deals with Muslim customary marriage and financial laws. Kailahit man ang atong uh, family laws 
no, og custom laws sa sa Muslims og non-Muslims to become lawyers uh, to become a lawyer under the Sharia court system of the Philippines kinahanglan makapasar po siya sa Sharia bar exam so aside from uh, passing the Philippine bar exam she or he has to take the Sharia bar exam para makapractice siya sa, sa Sharia court Okay. Decentralization. Okay, so what is decentralization? Now, there is no one single definition of decentralization, but the World Bank, for instance, uses the term decentralization to describe a broad range of public sector reorganizations. Re okay, so Decentralization is the transfer of authority and responsibility for public functions from the central government to intermediate and local governments or quasi-independent government organizations and or the public sector. Now, the Local Government Code of 1991 declares as the policy of the state that the territorial and political subdivisions of the state shall enjoy genuine and meaningful local autonomy to enable them to attain their fullest development as self-reliant communities and make them more effective partners in the attainment of national goals. So toward this end, the state is mandated to provide for a more responsive and accountable local government structure instituted through a system of decentralization whereby um, local government units shall be given more powers, authority, responsibility, and resources. Okay. The process of decentralization shall proceed from the national government um, to the local government unit. Okay, so there are basically three types of decentralization within the public sector. Okay, so first, we have political decentralization. So when we talk of political decentralization, this is the transfer of political power and decision-making authority to subnational levels, such as ele elected village councils, district councils, and state level bodies. Okay. Second is we have the fiscal decentralization. Uh, when we talk of fiscal decentralization class, this involves a level of recourse reallocation to local government, which would allow it to function properly and um, fund allocated service uh, deliv deliver delivery responsibility with arrangements for resource allocation uh, usually negotiated between local and central authorities. Okay, so um, the fiscal decentralization would normally also address such issues as assignment of um, uh, local taxes and revenue sharing through local taxation and user and market fees. Okay, so as you can see, kaning sa um, revenue sharing no, sa local taxes kay um, lahi manggod ang local taxes and the national taxes. Okay, so na na sila percentage. Okay. Next is administrative decentralization. This involves the transfer of decision-making authority resources and responsibilities for the delivery of selected public services from the central government to other lower levels of government agencies and field offices of central government line agencies. Now, the centerpiece of LGC class or the local government code is the system of decentralization as expressly mandated by the constitution. Um, indispensable to decentralization is what we call devolution, okay? And the local government code exp expressly provides that 
um, any provision on a power of a local government unit shall be liberally interpreted in its favor. And um, in case of doubt, uh, any question thereon shall be resolved in favor of devolution of powers and of the lower uh, and of the lower local government unit. So any fair and reasonable doubt as to the existence of the power shall be interpreted in favor of the local government unit concerned. So you have to take note of that class. Okay. Now, when we talk of devolution, so I mentioned a not too earlier, devolution. Okay. When we talk of devolution, this refers to the act by which the national government confers power and authority upon the various local government units to perform specific functions and responsibilities. Okay, so it shall include the transfer of local government units of the records, equipment, and other assets and personnel of national agencies and offices corresponding to the devolved powers, functions, and responsibilities. Simply put, class, devolution in plain and simple term is transference of rights, powers, property, or responsibility to another. So meaning the surrender of powers to local government or to local authorities by a central government. Okay, so local government units shall endeavor um, to be self-reliant and shall continue exercising uh, the powers and discharging the duties and functions currently vested upon them. So they, they, they shall also discharge the functions and responsibilities of national agencies and, and offices they devolved to them pursuant to the local government code. Now, if you read the LGC class or the Local Government Code of 1991, there are devolved powers mentioned there. Okay, so pwede liman tanang powers kidevolve uh, sa central government to the local government. So there are specific devolved powers which were uh, previously exercised by the national government and it is or it uh, these are enumerated in section 17 of the LGC and distributed to the different local government levels so nana na mentioned din ha uh, this provision is the core devolution of central government powers to the local government unit so uh, the section section 17 of the LGC class uh, mentioned the basic services and facilities. Okay, so mo na sa section 17. However, uh, the public public works and in infrastructure projects and other facilities. So again, ha, si section 17 nag-mention siya sa basic uh, services and facilities. However, public works and infrastructure projects and other facilities, programs, and services that uh, are funded by the national government under the um, annual general appropriations act other special laws and pertinent executive orders and those projects that are wholly or partially funded by the foreign sources are not covered by section 17 okay on devolution so unless um, the local government unit concerned is duly designated as the implementing agency for such projects, facilities, programs, and services. So, uh, devolution, however, you know, does not prohibit, kadiba, when we talk of devolution, again, this is the transference of power and authority gikan sa central government to the lower government. However, it does not prohibit the national government or the next higher level um, the next higher level of local government from providing or 
um, augmenting the basic services and facilities assigned to a local level local or to a lower level of local government unit with when such services can um, services or facilities are um, not available or if made available are inadequate to meet the requirements of it, its inhabitants so kung dili kaya sa local government unit class dili na gusto ingnon nga pasagdan ra pud siya sa next le level niya nga government unit or even the national government nga pasagdan lang siya pag pag unsa ni pag implement sa services and um facilities okay so you take note of that no. Let's talk about the concentration. So, may moon sana mong po ning the concentration, ma'am. So, we have decentralization, we have devolution, and then we have the concentration. Okay. So, when we talk of the concentration class, this refers to the transfer of authority and power to the appropriate regional offices or field offices of national agencies or offices whose major functions are not devolved to local government units. So, ayaw mo ka-confuse any class sa devolution o sa deconcentration. Okay? So, um, the national government manggut class is mandated to effect the concentration within six, six months after the effectivity of the local government code. Uh, that provision is found on section 528 of the LGC of 1991. Now, again, as mentioned ganina, do not be confused with the, with devolution and deconcentration. So, kung may nung kag de devolution, this is the transference of rights and, and or powers or authority by the, lo by the national government to the local government. So, for example, ang national government uh, president kana siya sa executive nga branch no ug mo yung kag sa local government units unsa man na sila so kanang atong barangay so that's the pinakal uh ubos nga level barangay and then we have municipal and then we have the province so kana sila kung maghisgot tag the concentration kato nang mga powers or mga functions nga wala gitivog sa local government units. For example, um, um, DILG, no? DILG, na sila yung mga powers sa, sa DILG nga sa national, na na sila um, gi transfer po ng authority probably dito sa region office. So, kung sa may region diri sa ato, like ang Region 8, the ILG Region 8, or the ILG Province, or the ILG ang sa City. So, so by level man na class. Okay? So, ug the concentration again sa mga appropriate offices na si ja, regional offices or field offices of national agencies nga tanang kan nga kana nga mga powers or functions wala ni lagi confer ngadto sa mga local government units so sila ana ang mga regional offices or field offices ang gi gihatagan or gi transferan sa power not the local government units okay so i hope na na kuha na ninyo okay. now in some class, um, local autonomy refers to the degree of self-determination exercised by local government units vis-a-vis -vis the central government. Okay, and to achieve that local autonomy, a system of decentralization is a prerequisite. So, dili mahitabo, walay local autonomy ng mahitabo kung walay system of decentralization. Okay, and to that effect, 
to 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 effect the system of decentralization a process of devolution is applied so again sa tong devolution this is the the, the transfer or ang 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 power functions and authority uh get transfer from the national government down to the local government okay now when the process involves the transfer of functions from national office to regional and local offices and not to local governments or dili sa mga local governments involving administrative functions again administrative functions it is properly called deconcentration so administrative functions rest class and sa deconcentration okay now local okay balik nga proceed na ta okay proceed ta sa local governance so nahuman na ta sa decentralization local autonomy and decentralization let's talk about local governance sa so, mga ng local governance okay so what is local governance Local governance comprises a set of institutions, mechanisms, and processes through which citizens and their groups can articulate their interests and needs, mediate their differences, and exercise their rights and obligations at the local level. Okay, so the building blocks of good local governance are many. So we have part uh, citizen participation partnerships among among key fa key actors at the local level uh of course the capacity of local actors across all sectors um multiple flows of information institutions of accountability and a pro poor orientation so this is mentioned in the UNDP 2004 now Local governance class emphasizes the need to look beyond the narrow perspective of local legal frameworks and local government entities. Okay, so it seeks to include the municipality of four, rather, multi multiplicity. Okay, it seeks to include the multiplicity of formal and informal relationships between different actors in development, like the local government, the private sector, mga associations, mga deconcentrated agencies, or mga CSOs. Okay, so maghisgotag CSOs sa atong next uh, module. CSOs is civil society organizations that shape and influence the output and effectiveness of political and administrative system at a sub-national level. Okay, so there is a large degree of synergy and coherence between supporting national governance processes and local governance as many of the aspects are uh, in fact the same uh, and is therefore necessary to work with governance principles at local levels to, of course, strengthen local governance processes. Okay, so take note of that. What is the difference between decentralization and local governance? Okay, so the main difference between decentralization and local governance are in the actual actors participating in the process and the mode of interaction between governments and private sector and civil society. Kung maghisgot ang decentralization, this pertains to public sector, institutional, and organizational reforms and processes and the support thereof. Whereas, when we talk of local governance, it pertains more to supporting the creation of an enabling environment where multi-stakeholder processes, 
uh, and that includes the public and the private sector, as well as the civil society that interact to foster effective local development processes. Okay, so take note of the difference between decentralization and local governance. Okay, so um, I'd like to share to you the quote uh, by Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so no man is good enough to govern another man without the other's consent. Okay, so parihara na class na um, walay mo sakit ni mo kung bilit na ni mo tagaan o um, consent ang usang na sakitun ka. Okay. Um, I hope you have learned something from this um, module class and um, you able to grasp the the, the concept you no know, the concept of local autonomy decentralization um devolution and deconcentration so i will upload this in the model so you can answer our um these questions you no know you will be given enough time to answer this. Thank you, class, for listening.